kids affected by high-risk childhood cancer. A personalised treatment approach using genetic analysis is seeing an increase in survival rates. Professor Glenn Marshall is the clinical lead at the Zero Childhood Cancer Program and he joins us now. Professor Marshall, thank you. And firstly, can you tell us about these treatments and how a child's genetics can inform what you do? Well, um, what we did was take uh, 60 children at the two Sydney Children's Hospitals and analyse their tumours in two ways and compare the ability of those analyses to predict what drugs the child should be treated with in a situation where their cure rate is very poor, less than 30%, so really often at the end of the road. Um, and so the findings were startling. It's an international first where we found that uh, the genetic analysis, which is more a traditional way of matching drug to uh, gene, uh, was not as strong a predictor as the test we invented, which is growing the cells from the tumour directly in the laboratory, performing uh, robotic drug screening and some animal testing. Uh, we showed that the extra tests on the fresh tumour tissue gave drug choices to families, so hope, uh, in um, more than half of the kids where we did the analysis. Uh, and the results of those tests was better at predicting the response of the patient to the drug um, than the genetic analysis. So we're very excited about the results. Mm -hmm. And so it saw that um, with the tests that you, you ran, you knew a better treatment before it started in some cases or you were able to change treatments knowing that there was a better course for that individual? Uh, yes, we, we were able to um, uh, basically add additional information in children, particularly where there were no genetic changes. About a third to a half of them will, will not have a guide a genetic abnormality that can guide treatment choices. And so in, even in the majority of those kids, we found drug sensitivities. Um, so, you know, the majority of children basically across the whole diagnostic platform uh, had evidence that we could provide a drug choice and that uh, that drug may work in those patients. How long does a study like this take and how did it come about? Oh, well, um, you know, I, I can remember back a patient I had many years ago, an adolescent girl who, who said to me as she was dying of cancer, she just wanted choices. And, and so the, our program grew out of um, a, a drug testing for genetics program that began in the US about 10 years ago. But what we saw was that many of these programs just based on genetic analyses weren't the... the um, suggestions of drug treatment weren't being used by the oncologist and the reasons were many but mostly the evidence wasn't strong enough um, patients didn't always respond to the drugs it was hard to get the drugs and there were side effects and so we sought to provide other evidence that might uh, back up the genetic evidence and what we found was it was even more predictive uh, and that uh, it added value even in children without genetic abnormalities. Professor Marshall, I know you're very careful of promising too much, but what difference do you believe this could make as it, it is rolled out further? Oh, I think um, it is potentially uh, going to provide major impact across all of other cancers as well. So what we've been able to show is in real time. So yes, it took four or five months to get a result, but in a relatively large number of children, we found important uh, treatment clues. And so that can be applied across, you know, a whole range of, of different human cancers. Um, we are about to embark on a very large national study where the federal government, the Mindaroo Foundation, have given a lot of money for us to do genetic testing on all children with cancer, not just these small number of high risk. And that will provide the additional value that we'll be able to, to to analyse what we call the germline or the DNA makeup of someone. So we found out five years ago that among the children who come to us with newly diagnosed cancer, roughly one in 10 of them will actually have a cancer predisposition gene. So this opens up an entirely new and exciting area where we will hopefully be able to uh, uh, you know, predict, uh, prevent with screening and perhaps possibly 
eventually give medication to reduce the subsequent risk of a second cancer in those children. And I know that 60 kids in the study, and so that's 60 kids and, and their families with quite a story behind them. Mm. Can you tell us about one that really stood out for you? Yeah, I can, because she was one of the first that we treated um, where it was a rare type of childhood cancer the size of a football in the child's chest. Um, within days of coming to the hospital, she was in the ICU on a ventilator, didn't respond to conventional chemotherapy, and only through our gene sequencing program were we able to uh, define a drug target there. We, we The drug had just been invented sort of a year or so before that, and so we gave it and she ran into my clinic recently and is about to start um, kindergarten in uh, you know next year so that i've got to tell you that's an amazing uh experience and uh well it just makes me very happy yeah it's a wonderful story thank you so much professor glenn marshall for joining us